Hey, this is going to be the first time anybody hears my voice on this channel. Uh, how you doing? Thanks for clicking. Uh, if you see this, you're basically going to be like the first person on my channel, so thank you for that. I hope you like. Uh, I'm doing this video for the Unus Honest Challenge for March. Marchus Honest, I know. The names are so great. Um... I've been inspired by Markiplier for a long time. I'm really vibing with their cool themes going on about, uh, you know, kind of like that seize the day YOLO kind of stuff. Um, Memento, Memento Mori is interesting because it's a, uh, it's a really old, um, philosophical ideal of always keeping death in mind because it influences how you value the time that you're spending at the moment. I mean, a lot of people have, um, you know, a lot of worries. There's a lot of anxiety in the world right now, and it keeps getting worse. And I think sometimes that we forget that um, that uh, this is going to sound stupid, but we're basically miracles. Um, and that everything we do is permanent. Um, our time isn't. But what we do in that time is... Uh, so, it's always good to try to sort of not hesitate to do something that you know is what you're going for. So, that was kind of the, the kick in the balls necessary to get me to, to, um, to think maybe I should try to pick something back up that I, that I like to do but haven't been doing. And so, for me... This is uh, this is gonna be somewhere between a new skill and an old habit that I'm gonna try to bring back, uh, which is candy making. So I don't know if you can tell, but I uh, I'm definitely into cooking. Um, I've been doing stuff like making cake mix into cookies uh, and stuff like that, um, and. I actually once had a candy making business that lasted for uh, like one day. And this is the box of all the crap that I had for that business, I think. I think that's what's in this box. So I thought it might be nice to try to get back on that because uh, making candy every day would not be difficult. It would take um, ingredients, and I'd have to go replenish at the store. But from what I'm working with right now, I think I can do something basic at least. Get this tea out of the way. I experimented with a lot of weird crap. Here's my box of gelatin. Who knows if any of this stuff still works. Some of it might be like four years old. Um, one of the things I was thinking of is maybe turning some of this tea into, like, tea candy. Usually you make, uh, hard candy with, um, granulated sugar and also some sort of syrup. I don't have syrup. But I do have honey. So I'm thinking I may be able to make honey candy. And if it ends up that I really do need syrup, I can always buy some at the store. But today, I can at least experiment. That was anthem gum. I was using these to make uh, gummies. Let's see. I've got other stuff to do today. I'm very impulsive. I don't have a lot of time to try this. Core gum. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you combine guar gum with xanthan gum, it creates um, something that is more gummy than the sum of its parts. It's very good in combo. You only need a tiny bit of it. <laughs> agar? Question mark? Yeah, this is agar. It's been pre-mixed with sugar, I think? Uh, I forget. I have notes about all of this stuff in a notebook somewhere. Okay. Uh, what I'm looking for right now is my candy molds. 
Um, I don't have a lot. Right now I have this um, pink silicon tray of heart shapes that I got from Alibaba or something. It's like unethically made in China. It was all I could afford at the time. Uh, I don't think it's in here. Oh, it's fenugreek. I should be using that. Okay, well, the good news is that we have plenty of colorings and flavorings. That's going to come in handy if we're going to make something special, but right now I want to just try basic shit. This should be somewhere else. Alright, we'll leave that in there for now. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm probably not going to turn the camera off. Maybe I'll edit out the parts that I don't care about. Or maybe I'll just keep talking with my hand covering the camera. That's better. <sighs> so, first of all, I'm going to pack some of this tea away. If I can. Maybe this is asthma. ASMR, I mean. I don't know if anybody else calls it asthma. Um, a lot of people don't know because ASMR got really popular. Um, this often happens with things that get suddenly popular. They don't, you don't always, the background information doesn't always go with the phenomenon. But um, ASMR is actually, uh, I want to call it a disorder, but it's like a condition um, that some people have and some people don't, which gives them like a tingly sensation when they hear something pleasant or there's an interesting sound texture. Um, for me, I get something similar, but probably unrelated, called musical frisson. Uh, musical frisson is where you have um, sort of, uh, frisson means goosebumps. So it's when you have goosebumps in response to musical um, events. And uh, those events. It's not just about liking the music, it's about anticipating the music. So, um, like for instance, whenever there's a famous key change, uh, or there's a bass drop, uh, there's, or a breakdown, there's um, something that feels kind of wild, but you're also expecting it. Um, you know, like, have you ever heard somebody say, oh, I love this part of the song, it always gives me shivers. That's musical frisson. So they're anticipating it. They say that the more familiar you are with the song, the more likely it is to give you musical version, but it doesn't have to, have to happen with something that you've already heard before. It can happen with um, other things. Like, for instance, um, I get musical version when I listen to big orchestra... Um, big orchestra... doing really cool... Dynamic, um, oh hey, aha, <laughs> this is a Space Invaders ice cube tray that I've been using for candle wax, um, just as a way to, um, cause I do also candle making, so it was just a way to, like, melt down the candles, um, combine them in ways that I wanted, and then I poured them into here to let them cool, and then they turn into little alien-shaped little pucks that I can just, like, drop into a, a project. Uh, and I also have this, which is a silicon plus plastic um, ice cube tray, which has uh, very convenient little push bottoms that helps things pop out. I think this is great, because this, we can make, like, little gumdrop-shaped candies. Uh, I think I'll try both of these and see how it works. Uh, one of the things to note with baking and a lot of food production, actually, is that um, there's always more. There's always more than you need, more than you were probably expecting, at least in my experience. There's always extra. So um, having more containers than you anticipate needing is... 
probably a good thing. Okay, we can use these. I don't have to find the heart thing in order to make this work for today. And I don't have that much time. Uh, I'm being bad by, by doing this. Like, I don't even know how long before I'm supposed to go somewhere. So I'm going to cut here and come back when these are clean of wax. That'll have to do it. I can't tell if I got everything off. Uh, <laughs> wax by itself won't kill you. I mean, paraffin wax is non-toxic. Uh, if you're worried about having a digestive system, it just goes right through. That's why there's wax on things like jelly beans. Didn't know if you knew that. But yeah, the uh, the waxy covering on jelly beans is actually wax. Um, the inside is a gummy. Uh, it's not just wax. It's wax that has been mixed with sugar and flavoring and coloring. Uh, did one of my nails come off? It did. Yeah, these aren't sticking on very well. <laughs> this is not a great uh, situation for nails. I kind of expected that. Let's see how many I lose today. It's okay, I can just glue them back on with more top coat, because I'm a genius. But yeah, so um, if these still have a little bit of wax on them, I'm not worried about it. It's basically a jelly bean, and if I die, I'll die eating candy. So that's not, not so bad. Okay, now the next thing to do is to mix the main ingredients in a pot. So we're going to need this granulated sugar. Um, my recipe is going to use honey. So I've got my nice Winco honey. I also have... <gasps> I do have syrup! Ho oh, ho! Organic light corn syrup. This is exactly the kind of thing you would use for a normal hard candy. Um, corn syrup is fantastic. A lot of people are scared of high fructose corn syrup. Uh, let me just dispel that for a minute. Um, high fructose means it's fructose, and fructose is good for you. It's the type of sugar that's in fruit, hence the name. Um, it's easier to digest than glucose, uh, which is normal table sugar, I think. It's either glucose or sucrose. Anyway, any sugar's fine for you if you take it in reasonable quantities at correct times, you know? So it's a carb, but it's actually better for you than table sugar. So, but anyway, uh, to make a hard candy, you combine the syrup with the uh, granulated sugar, and it turns it into basically just a thicker syrup. But because of the granulated sugar, it dries hard. Um, so, where's my pots? I know I have pots. Oh, there it is. This one's probably too big for what we're doing. It's only going to fill up a little bit. The thing about candy making, if you're a kid... Probably don't do this without adult supervision. It's one of those things. You know, like the Mythbusters intro, uh, we're trained professionals. I'm not. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a trained professional. But um, just so you know, molten candy, and that is what it is. It's molten, uh, is dangerous, and it splashes on you. It will cause a burn. And the problem with candy burns is that um, it will stick to you and continue to burn you, and it's very hard to wipe off. So what you want to do is... Uh, basically do the opposite of what I'm doing. Uh, I have no lawn sleeves, no gloves, uh, but that's because I'm a masochist. That's probably one of the reasons I wa like watching Mark so much, is because uh, he reminds me of me in a lot of ways. Okay, I've got my handy dandy measuring things. All right, let's see. Right now I have to look up ratios because I forgot um, I know that with the corn syrup and the granulated sugar, you're gonna want to have a one-to-one -one ratio. Unless I'm completely wrong. I'm gonna look that up. Okay, I looked it up. Uh, I looked up a couple different recipes, and I averaged them together. And it looks like, uh, for, at the bottom there, is my totals. So, um, it looks like you want probably twice as much granulated sugar as you want syrup and water. So it looks like it's a 2-1-1 ratio. Alright, that's totally doable. Now we have to figure out um, uh, how much of each we're going to waste on this nonsense. Um, let's see, how much do I actually have of these? 
not too much. Uh, I think the maximum I can do is probably about a cup. Let's try to go for a half a cup. Let's do something small today. Because it's like, what, like, probably... It's 2 o'clock, and I have to go probably about 2.30 or 3. So let's do whatever. Yeah, let's let's get it going. I'm suddenly feeling really tired. Um, I told you I was impulsive, right? Like, that's definitely a thing, because, uh, because I woke up today. <laughs> I went on YouTube. I saw the Marches Honest um, challenge intro thing, and I immediately started recording. So I haven't had breakfast. I haven't gotten dressed. I haven't had anything to eat, um, a.k.a. had breakfast. And I uh, also didn't take my medicine or, or anything. So uh, as a, more examples of what not to do. So, um, yeah, I'm not normal. I have all sorts of mental health quandaries afflicting me. Uh, but, you know, uh, you do what you do. You be who you are. You do what you got to do. This, um, uh, at least this time, I'm not starting a business. When I said impulsive, I meant I bought inventory to do, like, hundreds of sales, and, and, uh, and, um, I don't know what to tell you. I was broke at the time, and I'm still broke now. Uh, oh, another casualty. <laughs> uh, so far, I think I'm missing three. Uh, yeah, those two are gone. That's gone. One of them fell off somewhere. But, I'll be damned if we can't at least put the ingredients in the pot before I have to do other stuff. Don't be like me, kids. Be smart. Let me put it this way. I'm doing as smart as I can do. So, in a way, you should, you should, uh, you should copy me. You should do whatever is the smartest thing you can do. You know, I like Frozen. I know this seems like I'm about to go off topic. Uh, and I know that that's, you know, I'm opening myself up to cringe for a second. But yeah, the princess movie Frozen, I really like it. I think the second one was even better than the first one. And I'll tell you why I'm talking about this right now. is because in the second one they have that song when, um, uh, spoilers, uh, in the cave, there was a time where things were looking bad. And uh, they had to sort of buck up and go forward even when... You know, if they had the time, they should have sat down and processed their emotions. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes there's other stuff going on. And so one of the lines from that song was, I think it's, do the next right thing. And I think that is excellent advice for anyone dealing with stress, depression, uh, dangerous life circumstances, where you're looking at the future and not knowing how it can possibly work out. Um, you do the next right thing, and and that goes along with my advice of doing um doing uh your smartest possible thing for your uh, maybe not very not very good circumstances. So we put a half a cup of syrup in, which means that we're gonna want a full cup of sugar. And yeah, there's still syrup left in there, but I was looking at a lot of the uh. The ratios and oops <laughs> and thankfully none of them seem to be very exact and yes they did favor granulated sugar over syrup so this is not a disaster this is probably just gonna make a slightly harder candy which is totally fine for a hard candy I mean the harder the better I guess <laughs> I'm having trouble figuring out how to how to hold the camera and the ingredients at the same time. Usually cooking is a two-handed maneuver. <laughs> but, uh, oh, this is, speaking of frozen, that looks really pretty. That looks like snow, doesn't it? It almost looks like I'm making eggs. Um, but yeah, uh, so, let's see. Depending on how fast I get this done, I Never mind. I am heading out the door right now. I... <laughs> My phone ran out of storage space, and as I was on the computer trying to transfer the files over so I could clear some stuff up, uh, I ran out of time, and also I couldn't stop myself 
from messing around with the sugar a little bit because it just looks really cool. People are waiting for me to get out of my apartment right now. <laughs> I'm going to come back to this. Uh, if not tonight, then tomorrow. Oh, wait. All right. I'm back and I have new pants. Also, I realized that what I said in some of my earlier recordings during the day may have implied that you can eat candles. You cannot eat candles because pure paraffin wax is not the only thing in a candle. Uh, it is... Uh, I don't know how to read clocks. <laughs> It's 7.30 maybe, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, um, it's still March 1st. I'm doing the Unis correctly. We got back late. Got a new pants, a new phone. It doesn't matter, don't be jealous, it's $50. Uh, uh, but the good news is that now I don't have to manage my storage space like a true chaotic god. I can just keep doing whatever the fuck I'm doing right now. <laughs> I wonder if I can, like, put my phone on top of the fucking hood and just be like, Oh, hey! Uh, that's gonna be a problem if it actually falls in the pot, but damn. Okay, bear with me here. Now, I know that traditionally uh, a video is not shot in um, in upright angle and I realized that far too late into the day so it's just gonna be the way it is although I'm really liking this angle uh, if it gets steamy or whatever I'll remove it but for now it's perfect um, Let's see. Currently, the only thing in the pot is syrup and sugar. So right now, we have to add a half cup of water, and then we're going to be able to turn the heat on. Um, uh, again, molten sugar is very dangerous, so I'm going to take the hit. Don't worry about me, guys. I'll be okay. <laughs> uh, how much water is that? If I cook it for too long, it's going to reduce down, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, you do normally need a candy thermometer. Um, they make them for candy because candy is one of the applications that a thermometer is really applicable in. Uh, but I don't think I have one, so I'm just going to have to use my best judgment. Just eyeball it. Which is... Um, which is how I live most of my life, so I'm not super worried about it. I don't think I'm going to add the honey to this batch. I think I'm going to be okay without the honey. Um, I'm just going to pass that up, mainly because I need something to make um, candy with tomorrow, because I plan on doing this every day. Uh, even if I have to melt down my pre-made candies, and I'm going to make sure to do it every day. Uh, I'm on EBT, but it resets tomorrow, so I'll be able to get a lot more sugar, a lot more syrup. Uh, I still have plenty of flavorings and coloring, so I don't need that. But um, I might also do a thing where I melt down commercial candy, uh, and that's fun because you can melt it partially, so you can get these really cool um, swirls or, or layered effects. Uh, so that might be nice. Um, the thing about hard candy is that you can't really eat as much as you can make. So, um, that means that there might be quite a few meltdowns, uh, <laughs> melt of any kind, really. Um, all right, hold on. I'm just clearing some space here. So, uh... Oh yeah, I realize that if my family and friends are watching this, they're not going to have any idea why this video is what it is. Um, so, for the uninitiated, Unis Honest is a project that a famous YouTuber is doing. Um, he's, he and his buddy, 
Ethan, Mark and Ethan, are um, doing a sort of creative project uh, that they're going to delete after a year, uh, which is going to be this upcoming November, I think. And so the idea is that they're using the opportunity not to care too much about how it's received, uh, not to, um, you know, care too much about how it's monetized, and just to do whatever they want to do. Um, and I like that a lot. Uh, they seem to be having a lot of fun with it. It's fun to watch. It's kind of inspiring. So they do challenges occasionally, and uh, this challenge is to learn a skill or create a habit over the course of the month and upload videos um, every day of the month to sort of document or prove your process. Uh, so there's going to be sort of like a group accountability thing. Uh, or you can just do whatever and have fun with it. So I'm choosing to do this, and I don't know if I'm going to have to pick multiple skills or not, because I'm not sure if you can make candy every day for a month, <laughs> like physically, mentally, emotionally, but um, if it's not a skill challenge, then it'll be a funny challenge, I guess. So that's basically what I'm doing, and yes, I know I have a million, million other responsibilities, but uh, what's the point of having responsibilities? If you don't immediately uh, do something else, that's my personal motto. I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't take that seriously. Um, so I've turned on the heat. I'm turning it on higher than it needs to be just to get the heat started, but in general you want to keep this kind of low. Wow, that immediately smells horrible. This burner's not clean. <laughs> oh my god, that's going to be bad. I'm too lazy to clean it. Maybe I'll clean it tomorrow. Anyway. The first thing that we're going to do here is to just get all this stuff um, homogenous, which means that it all has the same texture all the way through, uh, which means that we're going to wait until the, the sugar is, um, uh, you know, it, it's going to become a, a sugar water solution, basically. Um, so we shouldn't see any lumps, uh, we shouldn't see any changes of color when I drag the spoon through, uh, the liquid should all be the same. And the syrup is, has a little bit of a, a little bit of a honey color to it, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so this is going to take a while, so I'm just going to keep chattering through it. Uh, so, actually, I had this idea, um, which was to do, um, cause I, I, I'm an amateur psychotherapist, which means that I grew up, um, sort of, uh, around people who had mental health issues, and I have mental health issues, and it just became an interest of mine why that existed, and in what way we were different from other people, and um, what things you could do about it. So, uh, because of that, that interest, that naturally uh, sent me towards learning about all sorts of uh, mental disorders, and um, like neurodiversity, and I, at one point, picked up a book called, uh, I think it's called the uh, Anxiety and Phobia Workbook, and it is excellent. And I've been helping people out of that book, helping myself out of that book. Oh, this needs to be turned down. I'm getting a caramel smell, which is bad. That means that we're going up too high. Caramel is what happens basically when you burn it. Uh, we're trying to avoid that, because if we burn it um, into caramel, it will not solidify correctly. Uh, and the taste will be different, so we're going to avoid that. Um, we're just going to try to go for a basic, classic hard candy here. If so if we get caramel, sort of like caramel's our failure state, which is great because caramel's excellent, so um, there's really no way to lose. Uh, so, um, but yeah, so I've been studying out of this book, and I was thinking, while we have downtime, I could um, just like read parts of it. Maybe that would be interesting to you guys. Uh, if anybody's actually watching this channel, feel free to tell me in the comments if that would be in, an interesting thing for you. Um, and I can focus on different things depending on user feedback. 
Um, I think that will help me not get bored because I get bored very easily. And as you can see, cooking is a long process. I don't want to cut the footage when I'm cooking because cooking is... I'm not sure how to explain how I feel about it, but because it's this long process, it's kind of zen, and it's kind of like, I don't know, it just puts me in a state of mind, and I want you guys to be able to experience that with me if you want. If you're impatient like I am, of course, you can put the video on two times speed, or you can skip around. I mean, I do that, so I'm not going to tell you not to do that. So, um... Yeah, do that if you want to, but but to make your time watching me worth it, I want to multitask. Um, and also just because multitasking is my natural inclination. So that's what we're going to be doing. Also, that means that you guys can watch me make mistakes, which may be better for learning. Uh, so, uh, essentially, um, if you guys can watch me do something wrong and then point out why it's wrong that will lead me to make better candies, but something I was thinking about, which is great, is that you'll never be able to taste it or even smell it. So that means that if I tell you that it's good and it's not, and I'm lying, you'll never know. So, uh, <laughs> but to make it fair, I'm going to be doing taste tests uh, for every batch, and um, I'm not comfortable showing my face. Uh, maybe I will in the future, but... I'll at least tell you my reactions verbally as I'm eating it. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell, but this is starting to be very clear. Um, it's not as, it's not as, uh, you know, sort of clumpy and dusty as it was before. Now it just looks like a straight up liquid, which is great. Uh, so now we're supposed to boil it. And that's a little scary because it does bubble a lot. And the thing about boiling it is that um, if you go for too long, it will burn pretty easily. So basically now, if I kept it at this temperature, by the way, I have it on about a one and my oven goes kind of high. So it's more like a more like a two and a half. Um, so right now it's on very low and if I kept letting it go like this forever, uh, the water would evaporate out. It would, it would, um, what's it called? Something like diminish. It would reduce. It would reduce, um, down to, I don't know, tar? <laughs> Basically an inescapable sugar hell. So that's what we want to not do. So we want to go ahead and boil it just straight up. And I've heard that it boils at around 300 uh, a little over. So that's the problem is I don't know what the temperature is going to be and I don't know how to find out. I've got a tongue thermometer, but like, I feel like it would just melt the plastic and that wouldn't be good. So we're just going to wing it. We're just going to watch for the bubbles. And then when it looks thick, we're going to take it off and pour it. That's the basic scenario. Um, I want to get a pan and I want to put the molds on top of the pan. So these molds, I want to set them on top of something so that if it spills over, which it does tend to, then it'll get collected and it won't go all over my kitchen. So I'm going to grab a pan. Yeah, we'll just let that sit for a bit. I'm not really sure if you want to follow what I'm looking at or if you... Yeah, I'll just, I'll just pick up the camera. Hold on. Okay, so yeah, so I'm going to have it set right here, and uh, so that uh, the molds are going to be here, the candy is going to go in, and it does drip all over the place, so if it goes down here, I don't want to get it, you know, just, you know, forever, everywhere. So, uh, let's see, yeah, that's that's safe to put there for a little bit. As you can see, it's starting to get cloudy again, that's because of the boiling, so it looks like that's going to be at a pretty good temperature, so I'm going to take that down a little bit, just in case, because that heated up pretty fast. So, um, have I told you I'm impulsive? Because I am impulsive, and I think I have told you that I'm impulsive, but I am impulsive, and, um, basically, 
This is a uh, tin that I have already covered in aluminum that I did in preparation for making cookies, and then I never did that, so it's ready for us right now. Excellent, fantastic, very good. All right, starting to boil. You can probably hear that hissing if you listen closely. That's the hissing of my life exiting my body. This is a little bit, this is an issue. This is an issue. That'll do, that's not the worst. Okay, so that's gonna be what we're doing. All right, so uh, I'm gonna put the phone back on the, on the thing. There we go. That should be safe enough. Okay, it's good to keep stirring this because uh, it can get sort of trapped on the bottom. All right, let's keep going. The heat can go up a little bit. It's supposed to be at like a rolling boil. I'm smelling it and right now it smells pretty generic. Which is good, because this is unflavored, so if it starts taking on a smell, that means it's caramelizing. Yeah, that smells like generic sugar, so that's fantastic. Oh, shit, I forgot. Okay, so I'm going to add citric acid, because it may sound harsh at first, but every single piece of candy in the universe has citric acid. Uh, it's what makes it taste like candy. Sugar by itself just tastes sweet. It doesn't taste like candy. It has to have citric acid to do that. That's because it mimics the citric acid in fruit, so it makes it taste more real. Citric acid is in strawberries, um, it's in apples, it's in everything. It's not just in citrus. Um, so this looks pretty good. It's starting to splash my hands, but uh, I'm not worried about it. I mean, I've gone to the hospital before, I can do it again. Not for this. <laughs> I've not, I have not gone to the hospital for this, uh, so don't worry about that. But seriously, if you're going to do this at home, wear long sleeves, don't be a dorkus. You know, the candy can always wait. So I'm not really sure how far to reduce this down because it's at this point that I stopped looking at instructions. So this is when we're winging it. But it does, I think it needs to get thicker. This water's gonna come out. Uh, it, it can't stay in here. I would turn the fan on, but then it would be impossible to hear anything. <laughs> Actually, since the, the microphone's facing away from me, so I legitimately have no clue how the sound quality is. It could be garbage, I'm hoping it's not. Um, but, you know, we're working with what we got here. At some point, I'm probably gonna get, like, a, a mounted camera situation, but right now it's just a cell phone. Um, so, truth be told, I don't even know if this stuff was designed, the molds, I don't even know if they were supposed to hold anything in them. Okay, so now's a good time to add the citric acid, I think, because this is reducing down a little bit. It looks a little shallower, so uh, I'm going to add some in. Uh, I don't know anything about ratios, so I'm not really sure what to do, so I'm just going to wing it. I'm just going to shake a little bit in there. All right, that should be plenty. Cause I don't like mine super sour. I like mine with just enough sour so it tastes like candy, so that it has a fruity taste. That's why fructose is so important because it just tastes different than sucrose and glucose and dextrose and all the other oses. Um, I don't really notice a difference in the smell. Yeah, I do. No, I do. It's definitely got a tiny bit more of a bite, which is good. That's what we're looking for. I don't want to add honey. I'm very tempted to add honey. But I'm just going to let it be what it is. Just going to have it totally plain. I want them to be like, I put them in my mouth and they taste boring. That's what I'm going for, because then I can use this as a base for candies later, um, if I run out of sugar. And I um, and I need to, to uh, 
um, harvest, scavenge, uh, cannibalize one cookie to make another. I mean candy to make another. I've been making a lot of cookies lately. Don't at me. Okay. I ran out of things to talk about. <laughs> I'm not as good as a... It's not as good of a... Good as a distractible person as I thought I was. My brain's off now. But that's okay because this part takes some concentration. I haven't yet seen any of the other March is Honest videos. Um... I feel like it's going to be really exciting to, to see all of those. Um, I hope that some of you guys are from the other March is Honest videos. And I'm, I'm just really proud of everyone who started on that because, like, I saw the video, I saw the, um, the most recent Unis Honest video pretty quickly. I always check them every day because I'm always on YouTube. And... As soon as I looked at the hashtag, there was always there were already like twenty videos um, of people doing uh, marches on us, and I thought that was really excellent. And um, and uh, this is kind of what we want it to be getting to. This is a lot. The bubbles are getting thicker. This is a good sign. It's reducing down pretty well. Um, yep, and it still doesn't smell like caramel, so that's good. Although it's probably going to soon. I'm gonna turn the. I'm going to turn the bubbles down. So now I'm at about a four and a half. Anyway, just I'm really proud of you guys for even having the desire to improve yourselves. Because that's really all it takes is the desire. Because like even if you fail, even if you fall off the wagon, imagine what you're doing compared to people who did not want to try and who didn't care about improving themselves. Um, you know, like... Like, um, I always tell people, as soon as you start something, you are already level one. Because the people who don't do it are level zero. As soon as you do it at all, you're already level one. When that comes to skills, that means that you're probably already better at it than 50% of the population. Like, for instance, if you've never sewn anything... And it's the first time you're ever picking up a needle and thread. As soon as you put that thread through the needle, you're better than 50% of the world, at least. So just remember that even if you're worse than Beethoven at music, you're still better than everybody who's never touched a piano. You know what I mean? So, like, don't get discouraged because people are where you want to be at. Be encouraged because you're moving in that direction while other people aren't. And honestly, it's not really about the comparison between you and other people anyway. It's about the comparison between you and the person you used to be. So, like, yeah, I mean, like, if you've never touched a piano in your whole life and then you press one key, you are a better person. You've done what you wanted to do. You've gotten better at something. You've pursued a goal because you're passionate about it. It doesn't matter if you're bad at it. As Jake from Adventure Time says, being bad at something is the first step to being kind of good at something. You'll always have to start somewhere. I know people have a hard time understanding this, but the people who succeed and who are very good at what they do um, are there because they failed more than you did. All right, this is still going pretty good. It is starting to catch a kind of a caramel flavor, so I should probably stop soon. I'm going to turn it down a little bit more. I'm going to let it reduce a little more because it's still pretty big. I think that it um, there wasn't that much syrup in it. This is definitely more than about a cup. Ideally, there shouldn't be that much water left in it. Um... But yeah, um, people who are where you want to be at and aren't yet are there because they failed more than you, because they tried more, and because they got that time in. You don't have to be good at something to get good at something. It's very important to realize that. Very important. In fact, 
The only reason I'm doing this is because my goal was to be bad at it. And if you let yourself be bad, that's how you get the experience. If you start with the goal of being bad at it and doing it anyway, you will go where you want to go. That's how I started a band. That's how I learned to sew and knit and crochet. That's how I learned to cook. You know, um, that's how I learned electronics. That's how I learned chemistry. That's how I learned psychotherapy. That's how I learned magic. That's how I learned basically everything that I do. Programming, art. I have a lot of hobbies. I'm not good at them. Don't be, a di don't be discouraged or intimidated. I'm bad at all of them. But that's why I'm doing them and getting experience at them is because I'm willing to be bad at them. That's the key. Be bad at something. Unus honest. Memento mori. Be bad at something. Although, if my audience really is people clicking in from the other Marches Honest videos, then you already know, you get it, because the moment you make a video, the moment you make a video, you're, you're in it to win it. The moment you try a skill, the moment you do what you want to be doing, you're winning. So, you guys get it. I don't need to tell you guys. I don't know why I'm talking about this anyway, I'm just very passionate. I'm very passionate about people doing what makes them happy. That's one of the reasons why I like Unus Honest so much. It's because it's, I mean, like, you watch the videos, and it's basically just like YouTuber jackass. <laughs> you know? Like, they're just doing stupid shit. But that's what I want to do. You know? That's what a lot of people wish they were doing, is having fun doing stupid shit. It's starting to get foamy. I think we're running out of time here before it becomes caramel. Let me sniff. Still smells pretty good, and it looks thicker. It's starting to get a little thick. Can you tell how much denser the material has become? I don't know if you can, but it's going in the right direction. I think it just needs a little bit more. I think we've gotten most of the water out, which is good. And it should soon be time to put them in the molds. And, you know, heck it, if we do make caramel, then we make caramel. It won't set, that'll be your clue, is if you try this and you set the candies away to cool, and you come back to them and they're still liquid, that's because you made caramel. Which means that there's no saving it at that point, you just gotta put it on your cereal and move on. You know what I mean? This is extremely foamy. I think we've done it. I think we're there. So now it's time to pour it into the molds. I'm just going to turn the heat off, set this to the side. You can't let it sit for too long because then it will um, it'll harden pretty fast. Uh, it doesn't really um, it doesn't really retain too much heat once it stops its momentum. Or maybe it does. Maybe I'm stupid. I don't know. Okay. So, it stopped bubbling. All right, I gotta put this over here. And, all right, let's see if you can see the molds. Sorry how weird this is. Okay, let's call that good. All right. Here we go. And uh, it will basically just drip all over the place. It's okay. You can try to fill them individually. Um, it won't necessarily work. It's very sloppy. Don't expect yourself to be a factory machine. You know, uh, life, organic life is full of inconsistencies. It's full of, um, oops-a-daisies, whoops-a-doodles. It's full of things you want to bring home to your grandma. But it's also full of the great shit that comes out of that when you get the results that you're hoping for. And you can't get the good results without accepting that there will also be bad results. All right. And I can flip you back. Sorry if you're dizzy. This is the result. 
these are gonna sit and they're gonna cool down don't touch them if you're doing this kind of shit with me if you're following along don't this isn't a tutorial <laughs> but if you do <laughs> if you do don't touch them at this point don't touch the candy left over in the pan don't touch the things in the mold you're gonna want to let it be for quite a while okay um if you hover your hand over, you can uh, feel, without touching them, that they're still warm. So if you feel any sort of heat rising off them, then that means it's a no-touch zone. It's a no-no square. And uh, the stuff in here is going to solidify pretty fast. And the nice thing about that is that um, when this is solid and this is cooled down, you can take the pieces out and taste test them. You'll be able to get a get a clue about how that's going to turn out. So I feel like we didn't caramelize them, which is good. I feel like that color is coming from the color of the syrup. It smells pretty good. Um, it smells like we didn't overdo it. So yeah, I'm happy with my results. This is day one of Marches Honest. I made candy. I did the thing that I've been wanting to do and I haven't been doing for a while. And we're going to taste these tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. And have a good night. Memento Mori.